Sir. Yes, sir. How'd you uh how'd you sleep? Uh, yeah, what's so up? You guys heard late last night, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, getting it done. Yep. There you go. I heard Matt butt fuck early in the morning listening to something. And then I heard music. And then I heard Van Retas listening to Drake on replay trying to take a Snapchat for this girl in the shower. <laughs> And then oh my goodness. I woke up, I went to the bathroom, and I, I don't Oh, he said you called him and for your jewel or something. Yeah. So I heard like someone was following me. Uh, it was probably, I thought, someone I was that. following me? You sound like, like you're in the mental asylum. What are you talking about? That, that house is a little bit nice. Uh, no, it was me and Reed. You went to go look for your jewel that you had in your back pocket. Someone was following me. I, like I heard him. And that's how they make so that's how jewel makes so much money. It's not that people are but it's not that they, they sell a bunch of pods and people are constantly losing their jewels and have to replace them. That's their whole business model. I'm kind of right there. I'm probably not even joking. How'd you sleep though? Did you even sleep? Uh, sleeps for the week. Okay. Yeah, I slept. Man, that food last night? Spot on, right? Oh, yeah. I was scared to try it, but I was like, you, you thought I didn't like it. I was just trying to figure out what it tasted like. Yeah, well, I, I told Manrique, too. I was like, dude, that was fire. That chicken. Guy just interviewed Manrique's personal. was like, oh, you know, we got to try Manrique's mom's chicken tiki marsala. I was like, oh, I'm way ahead of you, buddy. <laughs> way ahead of you. Yeah, he called Manrique right away. Who did? His buddy. The dude that I was interviewing today. Yeah. Yeah, that's Mac. Uh, gas, Logitech. Everything's gay. Okay. Admit all. Start doing good. What's going on, guys? Everyone get situated, get to a desk, get some pen and paper out. As I make this thing not look like a... Disney animated crooked picture frame looking thing. All right. Brian, you hear my man? Gotta have video on or you're gonna get dust boot. Puppy. Oh, it's a cat. Oops, it's a cat. We missing anybody, guys? Um, I think Tasha still needs to join. Who? Tasha. I think Tasha. Wasn't she here yesterday? Yeah, there was a yeah, Tasha yesterday. Yeah. I know I her computer her was messing up this morning, so she might be having issues. What was she having issues with? Her com computer. Charging her computer, is that what she said? Oh, she just said her computer. Her computer. OK. 
Okay, well, I think we're just gonna have to start with Aunt Tasha. Oh wait, she's in the waiting room, whoops. Tasha. Tattoo, I like that hand tat. That's cool, what is that? Is that an anchor? Yeah. You fuck someone in the face with it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, welcome to day three of training class. Ran by yours truly? No, I'm kidding. But my, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Vince Masseri. I'm one of the MGAs in this in this agency here. Uh, blessed enough to start with Mr. Vina about two and a half years ago and never thought I'd be all the way out here two years fast forward or an MGA. Uh, knew I'd be an MGA, but not this fast, not with this much growth. So excited to be here with you guys. The, the foundation of, of the next step here. <laughs> Speedway. <laughs> Definitely finish that or... or or set it aside. I, I like you though, so I'll give you. You're on my team, so I'll give you some leeway. You, you can you can eat a little bit of it. You're probably starving, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just I just I just swam. So. You just swam. Yeah. Holy moly! Do you swim a mile? Mm -hmm. Only 500 meters. So. 500 meters. Mm -hmm. What is that? 11 laps back and forth. 11 laps. We got Michael Phelps in the building, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So guys, today, um, you know, what we'll be going over is uh, basically the introduction and rapport. You didn't have to lie. I was supposed to. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm done. You don't need that Speedway stuff anyway. No, I shouldn't have eaten it in the first place. So we're going to be going over the introduction and rapport. Probably the two most important parts of the sale. Aside from closing, but the better you do with these parts, the easier the close is going to be. Who ran this yesterday for you guys? Casey. Casey. The day before that? Tommy. Tommy? Yeah, okay. You guys see Gio yet? No, no I, I did when you guys had me in that one class. Last week? Yeah. Okay. So, I know there is a little bit different intro. There's a little bit of a different intro with your guys' script and my guys' script. Okay, so we're gonna try to, you know, cater to both today. Um, ours is a little bit more wordy. Drew, Josh, Casey's team, just a little bit less wordy. It's pretty much the only difference. Both just as good, nothing wrong with them. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of be doing, you know, two things at once today. You guys can hear me and see me okay on the screen, right? Okay, all right. So first thing I want to go over, guys, um, before we even get into rapport, before we even get into the intro, is like getting them on Zoom. Most of us are virtual in this room, right? Okay. So the, the, the biggest thing about getting them on Zoom is control. Hope this green marker works. So we're going to go over. Nice. Getting on Zoom. Rapport. That's really light. We can't see it. Oh, no. All right. I'll be right back. Yeah, 
the guy before that. Hang on, don't lose. All right, you guys probably heard all that, right? <laughs> okay, so let's try this again. Maybe we can even open these blinds and turn these lights off. Get some natural light in here. La, 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 la. Let's see what this looks like. You guys mind? Uh, that looks good. Okay. Oh, for first that intro. I need an eraser. We got a rag in here. What is happening? Poor intro. Okay, those are the three things we're going to be going over. Now, guys, the most important thing out of all of this is definitely is definitely control. Okay. And that comes with getting them on Zoom. Without control, basically you'll never be able to control the clients. You'll never be able to control how they feel, how they think. They'll be controlling you. You want it to be a teacher to student relationship, not the other way around. One way to get a student to teacher relationship is to have no control. Problem is a lot of you guys in this room are young. You have to look, talk, sound, and act professional and older than you are. And don't feel bad if anyone has tattoos or or piercings or, I mean, just about a year ago, my hair was dyed green and I'm in a green day concert. So we work hard, play hard here. It's all good. But more or less, you want to make sure you, you, you bring your A game. They need someone that's like, that, that not like a hustler, like I'm going to go steal, steal a woman's purse off the street, but like they need a hustler. They need someone that they can trust. When you're buying a product, whether it was insurance or whether it was your first house, Whatever products any of you guys have bought or a car, the person that sold you those had the juice. They had it going on. They gave you no doubt in your mind that what you were getting was the best option possible. Okay, that's because they had control. They told you, hey, come here, look at this. This is what this does. You said, okay, that's great. They told you that you're getting a great deal because this and this and this, and compared to the other dealerships, we have all these incentives and extra packages He's controlling you. You're yes, just like a doctor. Doctor comes into the room, professionalism, credibility through the roof. This gentleman went to school for half of his life just to come and tell you what's wrong with you. He comes in the room, he says, sit down, you sit down, he says, stand up, you stand up. He tells you bend over and cough, you bend over and cough. <laughs> just kidding. You know, you do whatever he says here, you got a problem, it's this, it's that. Here's his prescription, take it. No one asks a single question. You don't say, why, doc? Why do I got to take that prescription? I don't believe you. I don't have high blood pressure. You, no one ever says that to a doctor. You know why? Because the doctor has the control. And why he has the control is because of his professionalism and his knowledge and his value he's able to bring to the table. You guys need to have those three things. You need to have value. You need to be someone that they like to talk to. You got to be up on current events so you know how to carry on a conversation. This guy starts talking about Joe Biden. I love Joe Biden. This guy starts talking about Donald Trump. I love Donald Trump. This dude used to be a carpenter. I used to be a carpenter. I really did. So I, I'm not lying. All right. It was professionalism, knowledgeable, and valuable. Valuable. Adding value. Right. So when you come in, you have to make sure you have those things under your tool belt. The easiest way to get these things, guys, is, is really just to kind of fail. You got to fail. You got to try the report. You got to try the intro. You got to try these presentations until you fail. 
Eric last night when we made that 2K sale, popping on at 9 p.m., I'm like, you're doing the whole thing. He's like, whoa, I just messed up that whole last sit. I was like, no, you didn't. You did fine. He's like, I know I messed up something. I'm like, you did fine. Forget about it. Take that emotion out of that last sit. Time to start fresh. I've never done the needs analysis before. I said, well, you're going to do it right now. <laughs> you know, he, you know he, he jumped in there. He did it. Confident. He was able to be confident and he was able to remember the script where he messed up in the previous sits. He was able to succeed in this sit because of rapport and control. They were Hispanic. He's Hispanic. They were born in Mexico. He was born in Mexico. Once all that stuff was out on the table, now Eric can focus. He can remember his script. He can talk right. He can act right. He can come off as he's more real, relatable. They bought him last night. They bought him. Always remember. Is that deal? Yeah. First thing. Always remember, first they buy you. Then they buy the company. And then they buy the product. So without these two things, they're not really going to buy the product. Unless they've just been like, hey, we've been waiting for life insurance. We're ready to buy. We were actually just ready to buy some. We're going to buy some from you today, Eric. Right? So just keep this stuff in mind, guys. You just have to bring, you got to bring the sauce. You got to be someone that's confident, concise. These clients, they need certainty. You're going to walk away with a $200 to $100 a month check that they're going to give you for the rest of their life. That stuff doesn't come without these three areas being mastered. It might come that moment, but then they might cancel later. You might have two out of three of these and get the sale, but then they might cancel. The odds are they might cancel later. You got to have all three of these areas down. Who can give me some tips on, on how, to, how to have a client buy you? How you can make a client buy you? Smile. Smile, spot on, smile. Voice and flux. flux, yep. Tasha said smile first. I saw that. Smile, right? Smile is everything. I can say a lot of abrasive stuff with a big smile on my face. I don't even like my smile. I just grill it at them. You don't want to go get your policy? Joe, just go look. Just go grab it. Just, just take a few minutes. Just go grab your policy. Even if it saves us a few minutes, even if it takes you a few minutes, it's going to save us an hour. He's thinking, holy hell, an hour. But I'm smiling, so it's no big deal. He, okay. Eric last night told the lady, there's 48 different types of life insurance, he said. And we're about to go over all 48. And she went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not even question it at all. Smile, right? He's confident. No reason not to listen. Control was there. Okay, so you guys want to make sure Smiling is definitely huge. What else? Obviously rapport, right? So we'll go over that. Okay. But before we jump into everything, guys, um, just, just want to make sure that, that we kind of understand a, a background on this stuff, on, on how to gain the control, on how to make them buy you, Control starts on the phone. Control starts on the phone, okay? There's something called Hugh Bell's five keys for enthusiasm. These things will help you guys out tremendously. First one, I know uh, I heard an uh-huh in this room. Does anyone know what the first one is? I almost gave it away in the title. No, Eric, was that you? No, I said, hmm. Mm. First one's be enthusiastic. Obviously. One of the second ones is speak with emphasis and conviction.
be enthusiastic. Surround yourself with enthusiasts. Who are you guys hanging out with at home? You surround yourself with maybe mom or dad that are really pessimistic like my dad is? Or you surround yourself with enthusiasts who are making you enthusiastic? Everything's great. Everything's awesome. Happy to be here. Excited to meet you, Mary. I'm almost selling myself on any way I can on why I like them, you know, selling myself on. They remind me of my brother, remind me of my sister. Love that. You're a carpenter. I love that. That's great. You're a nurse. You're working so hard. That's awesome. I'm like selling myself on it. I'm like, this is great family. They're great people. They need me right now. Without me, they're not going to get taken care of. Second one, guys, is not a, you know, that we, we talked about it, but this is the real order. Let yourself go. Let yourself go, Eric. I'm trying to tell you last night, you got this. Let yourself go. Be yourself. Let yourself go. Be an actor. Be an actor. Be sincere. Five. Speak with emphasis and conviction. That was the number two I threw at you guys earlier. Speak with emphasis, oh, emphasis and conviction. Be enthusiastic, guys. Are we enthusiastic in this room? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. Surround yourself with enthusiasts. Are we surrounded by enthusiasts in this office? Yes. yes. I think so. Let yourself go. I think we're all letting ourselves go pretty well in here right now. I don't know about you guys that are on the virtual realm, but if, if you saw how well we let ourselves go in this office, you might think it's like a Wolf of Wall Street type vibe going on here. We let ourselves go quite a lot. But you got to let yourself go. You just have to remember, guys, to be yourself. Even if you forget a part of the script, just let yourself go. Skip that sentence. If you forgot it, don't stress over it. Don't get stuck on it. Don't turn red. Just let yourself go. Know that what, know what you got is valuable and have confidence in yourself. Just let yourself go. Yeah. Hey, and, and, and by the way, guys, I almost forgot to mention a couple minutes back, but when you do take money out of your cash value, Right, just let yourself go. If you miss something, calm down, relax. Your brain will think of it. Put it back into the script. It doesn't have to be in a certain order. Just let yourself go. Be yourself. Sometimes we might forget it close. Let yourself go. You forgot that I can't afford it close. Straight up, just okay. Uh, you, you know, you, you said that you, you what you like to do for fun in the area. Remember how we asked that in rapport. And what if he said, I like to go to the casino every week? I'm be out of, I'm, I'm at the end of the presentation. I'm like, oh, wow. Honestly, Joe, I'm going to let myself go. I'm going to speak from the heart. I'm just, Joe, you know, you, you, I understand if you, you know, I know it may be hard to afford 30 bucks a month right now, 60 bucks a month right now. I know that may, may seem hard to come up with, you know, two bucks a day, you know, but if you think about it, Joe, if, if it's hard to come up with $60 a month, you know, two bucks a day right now while we're together as like a team, how, how is Mary, how would you expect Mary, Joe, when you die to come up with $30,000 all at once without her best friend here to even do it? And Joe, they're not asking you to set aside 300 bucks a month. They're not asking you to to take all that money that you spent at the casino and put it into this. They're just asking for a little bit of that. Just 30 bucks. That's a couple roulette table rounds, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So wouldn't you say that, you know, just doing a few less roulette games every month will be worth Mary never having to worry about anything when you're gone. You know, just let myself, I just made that whole thing up. Just let yourself go. Just let yourself go. What's up? No, no, I was giving a thumbs up. That uh, was good. Yeah. Hey, so that's all right. It wasn't the best, but I'm just kind of give you guys an example. Being an actor, this is probably the biggest thing, guys. This is probably the biggest thing. I cannot stress on this one enough. Be an actor. Like, 
When I started, I would watch Gio do these presentations and I was just working with these blue collar guys myself. And I was like, this dude is too much. I'm like, they are going to see right through him, read right through him. And, and it, it's honestly kind of like soft, like, you know, wussy. That's yeah. what I thought, but they ate it up. They ate it up. Everything he did wasn't what I knew him for. I'm like, where did he, like, why does he talk? He wasn't the same person anymore. He wasn't the same person anymore. We went into the house. He wasn't the same person. He was someone that everybody could love. He was someone that cared deeply about every comment concern they had. And he, he was, he was somewhat of an actor, right? His voice was different. His, his hands were going all over the place. His mouth was moving in crazy ways. I've never even moved my mouth before. Yeah, actually what it's going to do, Eric, is it's going to make sure that the family's always taken care of. I'm like, I'm like, this is, you know, so I go in there, I'm released, I'm out of training and I'm just saying the script, trying to be real, not really changing my voice too much, just being myself and wasn't closing. I want to think about it. Can't afford it. All the different types of things that you hear that it doesn't make you, that, that you don't, that you missed the sale for were happening. Started to go back, started to listen to his sits. The way he was saying the freedom of choice, the way he was saying the discount card, the way he was saying the introduction to the life insurance, everything had a certain tone and a certain way he said it. And I watched him so many times, even though I didn't know my script that well, these things would pop in my head during the sit. And I just started to think like, just imitate exactly what he did, right? As soon as I got this almost fake persona, I don't talk like that. I don't go around talking like this all day with my mouth going all nuts. Like, yeah, yeah, great, great question, Joe. Absolutely. Glad you asked. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I talk like this. This is my normal talk, right? So I got into a phase where I was an actor. I'd go into the sit. I don't care if you got to jam to some rock and roll or sing your favorite DMX song before you get in there, whatever you got to do. If you got to, you got to be able to let yourself go and get in this actor stage. I used to listen to all kinds of music. I used to be, it would be like Grant Cardone, Seller Be Sold for the first hour, last half hour before I got into the set. I was jumping up and down in my car, getting my jaw moving, just ripping songs, ripping lyrics, the ones I knew the best, you know, from when I was a kid, Eminem, Lincoln Park, whatever it was, Biggie Smalls, just started just ripping it word for word, getting myself confident, getting my mouth moving, getting ready to, to enter in, open that door, put my pen in my pocket. By the time I kicked open my car door, I was, I had a, I had it down to a, a science. The door kicked open. I stepped out of the way, it closed itself, walked right up to the house. You know, I'm like, here we go. Lights, camera, action. Not going to be the same. You have to become somebody different for two hours. And that's difficult for a lot of us in this room. It's something you have to try, like a skill, like pounding a nail into wood. You're going to bash your finger thousands of times. Eventually, though, you're doing it blindfolded. One hit, not even more than one hit. Nails driven into the wood. Got it down. Good. Right? You guys have to try you're not going to be naturally able to do this you're probably looking at me right now like that's not me i don't sound like that i'm not fake i don't get into that well you better you better find some version of it for you that matches your personality or you're never going to make it i promise you if you think that a ten thousand word script and an hour and a half plus presentation if you think saying it in the same tone the whole time is going to cut it, you're absolutely mistaken. The average attention span in America is eight seconds. Eight seconds. The average words per minute is like in the 160 plus. So if you're speaking that many words a minute and we're speaking 10,000 word scripts, and we're staying in the same monotone fashion the whole time. Now, your freedom of choice certificate is going to make sure it's a guaranteed three to five day payout, Joe and Mary. And on top of that, they're going to do two things when they pay out the claim. They're going to mail a check out to Joe for his maxi how much. They're going to mail a check out to the funeral home for what's left over. And all in that three to five days. You guys will never have to worry about that. Any questions on the, on the, on the freedom of choice certificate? Okay. Now, your discount card, guys. Your discount card is great value. It's going to provide up to 60% discounts on out-of-pocket expenses. Where they saw members paying out-of-pocket the most. First one was eye care. You guys have any eye care? Okay, great. Now, the will. The will, the will they're just they're done. They're not listening to you anymore. Like, after 10 seconds... You'll see their eyes on the screen, go to other things, yawn, check their phone. When that's happening, they're not listening to you anymore. 
if I stood up here in this class for the next two hours and I talked to you guys like this the whole time, y'all would be falling asleep. It's the same stuff you're going to do to the clients. You're going to put them to sleep. So you have to be an actor. Be an actor. Just get overly enthusiastic about everything. Yeah, great question, Eric. Yeah, great question. I'm glad you asked. Actually, the whole reason our company was created was to help out with those problems they saw in Union America. You know, we were created about 70 years ago to provide permanent life benefits to work in families just like yours. So that's good question. Please stop me if you have any other questions. We're going to be going over a lot of important information today. Do you have any other questions? No. No? Okay. Any questions on how the discount card works? No. Any questions on how the eye care works? No. <laughs> You froze like <laughs> as you guys kissed it, like froze. It was a nice portrait. <laughs> but um uh but but you know, so be an actor, guys. Get into a different stage. It's gonna actually hurt. Your jaw is gonna hurt and you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be tired because it's not you. You're gonna get out of the sit, you're gonna open your office door and be like, <sighs> you're gonna go get a glass of water, you're gonna go get pumped up again, and you got one more sit coming, you're gonna be like. Oh. All, right. all right. Hey, Joe. Hey, Mary. All right. Start the clock again. Time to be an actor. Right. Have to, have to, have to. I got people on my team right now who have been here for six months. I literally had to hold a lighter under his arm when he was presenting because he wouldn't raise his voice. I'm like, Stephen, Stephen, you all met Stephen, right? Quiet guy. Joe, Mary talks like this he's almost like a doctor himself you know essentially what this is going to do right a lot of trouble closing a lot of trouble getting people to see the value that's because he was monotone so i'll be over there with this later while he's presenting in my in my living room i'll be like psh, 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 psh. He'd be, joe joe and mary yes. can you guys hear me okay can you see me okay i'm like behind the webcam i'm like I'm like come on be an actor i'm like holding up the five Keys to enthusiasm. I'm like, let yourself go. As soon as he started doing it, sales, sales, sales. You're really great, Stephen. You'll see. They'll be smiling at you through the camera. They'll be like, this is great. This is awesome. You do the intro. You do the ratings. Even though the ratings are boring as heck, you do it with enthusiasm. You do them as an actor. My man, Stephen Shilly, is probably the best possible in this whole room with this right now. Thank you. I, I don't even have to. Stephen, he's been here for three days. And I walked by him the other day and I'm like, hey, you learned your script? He's like, absolutely. He's like, hey, Vince. He's like, hey, Vince, I'm Steven with American Income. He's like, how you doing today? Wonderful, I can't complain myself. I'll tell you what, Steven, I'll get you off the phone real quick here. I was like, we were all sitting around in the room. I'm like, see that? I'm like, wow. A couple of us that have been here for a while were looking at each other like, that's it. That's the juice. So be an actor, guys, be an actor. Become somebody you're not, emulate your manager. And then eventually, after your first 100 presentations, you'll be able to make it your own acting script, okay? Are you able to put, put the five in the chat? Uh, can you not see it? Oh, wait, hold on one sec. Um, the computer is making them blurry. Oh, man. I mean, I really want to, but it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take me like way too long. But I'll do it just for you, Good. only for you. Be enthusiastic. Surround yourself with enthusiasm. You know what? Here, hold on. I'll send this to you after. Put your number in the chat, and I'll send you this picture, okay? Because I don't got too too much time. We got a policy on her. Oh, there you go. Bam, team player Tasha, let's go. All right, be sincere guys. Okay, this is like a good order too. At the beginning, during rapport, during the intro, you're enthusiastic, nice to meet you, how are you? You were this, that's awesome, my dad did that too. How fun was that? I've always wanted to do that, I'm enthusiastic. Even if something is really not that interesting, I am making it the most interesting thing ever. Let myself go, showing him that I'm a real person, distancing myself from the last sales rep he's seen. And trust me, you're not the first one they've seen in their life. So letting yourself go is going to make them feel comfortable with you. He's different. He's skipping the videos for me. Wow, that's cool. Right? 
Now, yeah, they love it. Every time we say that, I'm not going to bore you with those videos. They're like, oh, thank you. That's awesome. Do you remember those videos last time? Yeah, we just got to play one, but we're not going to bore you with the rest. Oh, that's great. Now you can be sincere, though. Now, guys, you've mastered this control. It's almost like an upside down triangle. Control, tie downs. You know, the actual needs and the clothes. The better you do with the control and the intro, all you got to do in the clothes is just be sincere. I was loud and enthusiastic when I first started. I sold them on me. I tied them down. Does that make sense? Does that make sense why you need that for your family? Showed them the need. And now in the clothes, I can just be sincere. And, and I don't have to be all loud and crazy now in the clothes. I can just tell them straight up. And honestly, you know, guys, I, I get it. I understand where you're coming from. The, the thing is, though, and I can proceed to close it, right? They're going to take that as if you're talking to them from like a family member perspective. But if you miss all this and then you go try to, well, you know, if you don't get this, the family's not going to be able to, you know, the need, this, that. You can try every close in the books. But if you don't have this stuff down first, if you don't have the control down first and the rapport and the trust, they're not even going to hear the words with the same perception. None. Zero. Not even the same perception whatsoever. So... Be sincere, guys. Speak from the heart and speak with emphasis and conviction. Don't be all soft. Oh, man, looking down, looking left, looking right. You guys are going to get nervous. You're going to stutter. You're going to turn red. Your first 100 presentations, you're going to get better and better, 1% better each time. But you need to make sure every time you're implementing new attempts at these five areas. Speaking with conviction, I was nowhere near as loud as I needed to be. Listen to your recording and you'll, you'll, you'll get embarrassed. How many of us like listening to ourselves? Probably don't like it too much, right? It sucks, it's like the worst thing ever. How do you think the client feels? If you can't listen to yourself, how's the client gonna listen to you? Biggest thing I do for trainees is after a sit, I'll play the recording of how they were saying things and what they were saying. And they're sitting there, oh, oh gosh. Oh. Shayla, my girl Shayla the other day, she, oh my gosh, why did I say that? That sounded so weak. Like I didn't even tell them the real need. I was just like speaking the script. I'm like, yeah, glad you figured that out. Now in the next sit, we're going to do everything we can to correct that. You get closer and closer every time. But if we never would have sat down and looked at that script, Shayla would have or looked at that recording, Shayla would have just kept moving on to the next sit, wondering what the hell she's doing wrong, trying the same thing, throwing something at the wall, hoping it sticks. You have to be able to self-evaluate, guys. It's always your fault. The biggest thing that helped me was reading Sell to Be Sold. He talks about how it's always your fault. It's almost never price, and it's almost never. The client, it's always something that the saleswoman or salesman did wrong. Every time I left the sit, I was blessed to be trained by Gio. He was a top producer in all of Aries agencies. Right after I got there, I was right in his car. Trained me tough. Saw like five people a day. 2K, 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 2K. But I always knew that he sold somebody that I couldn't. I got into a sit. I ran into the same problem he did. Difference was he was able to close them. I wasn't. I called him up right away. I know you could have sold that person. What did I do wrong? I know it's my fault. I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? He'd walk me through everything sentence by sentence. Did you say this? Did you say that? I'm like, I didn't think I needed to say that. Like, is that really that important to say? He's like, yeah, bro. It's like a loaded gun. So many moving parts in a firearm. 
You don't put everything back. One little spring, one little pin out of place, gun's not going to fire. Uh, Self-evaluate, guys. Self-evaluation is huge. Okay. One more thing I want to go over just to drive this home. Did any of us in this room go to college? We got one, two, two people in this room. Oh, three. Oh, there we go. One, two, three. That's it. We all went to high school though, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> Can you guys take a time, take a second to remember the teacher that you hated the most? I got better right after that. Who was it? Mr. T. Mr. T? How about you? Mr. T, I'm pity the fool. <laughs> How about you, Steven? What's the teacher you hated? Mr. T. Another Mr. T. Yeah. Oh, T. Mine was Mr. Thomas. How about you, Tasha? Who, who did you hate the most? I had a math teacher named Mr. Reiner. Mr. Reiner? I hated my math teacher too. Her name was Mrs. Ron today. How, how about you, Christy? Miss Plum. Miss Plum. Oh, that sounds tough. Miss Plum. How about you? Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. See how we all got a teacher we hate? <laughs> Let me ask you guys something. How did they do in these five areas? The teachers that you hated? Not too well. Didn't do any of them. I'll tell you, he, he was really enthusiastic, enthusiastic, but he was a, uh, hated my color. Hated your color? Let's go kill him. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, how about you? Fail, fail on all these? Uh, Zero out of five, one out of five? Uh, just, about, just about all of them. Just about yeah. all of them, okay. How much did we learn in those classes? Not much. Not a damn thing, right? Didn't learn a damn thing. Didn't pick up a single thing. It's exactly what I'm talking about. You go fail in these five areas, client ain't going to like you, they ain't going to hear you. Your words will never be perceived the same. No value. They'll actually be doing the opposite. The more you talk, the, the more it gets them fired. They're like, this is such BS. No, now he's talking about life insurance. I knew this was coming. You know, <laughs> damn it. You know, like they just are ripping you apart, everything you say. And you're like, what is happening? This just works so well in the last sit. And this dude's just shooting it all down like I'm some kind of fake guy. That's because you didn't get the trust. You didn't have the control. You didn't have the good rapport. Think back now to your favorite teacher. Who's your favorite teacher? I had Mr. Oh. Mr. Compeggi, man. My God, Mr. Compeggi. How's Mrs. Wells? Cool? A saint. A saint? What about your favorite teacher? Uh, it was a lady named Mr. Romani. Mr. Romani, how about you? Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. He was a court. How did they do in these five areas? Let, let himself go a little too much. Let himself go a little too much. Just like me in the sit sometimes, right? <laughs> That's what you got to do, right? That's what I'm getting at, guys. My teacher I didn't like, Mrs. Ronaday. She came in every single class. Sit down, Vincent. She hated me. Hated me. Sit down. Don't move. Don't talk. Work the whole time. Work. Work. And monotone teaching. She was a math. She was a math person, a math teacher. This, that, and the other, all day, same tone, same thing, every time. Never changed it. Never was enthusiastic. Never asked how my day went. Never asked how my life at home was going. Never got personal with me at all. Never asked to help me. Never asked what I needed or what they could do for me. Never even showed us any of these five areas. And guess what? I failed the crap out of that class. Failed. Did not look forward to it. Yawn so many times. I, I, I would drink a Red Bull. I did everything I could, and I'd be falling asleep. 
Mr. Compeggi, though, he comes in. Hey, what's going on? Mr. Maseri, nice to see you. I like that shirt. That looks good. Man, you look good today. How you doing? How was last night? You, you go to the football game? You get to see that? Nice to see you. Steven, good to see you again, brother. How's it been? Fantastic. How about you? You're not going to bomb this test again, are we, today, are you? I hope not. Did you study? No. I told you you got to get that homework done. <laughs> Come on now, come on now. <laughs> Let me talk to you after class. Let me learn about you. Let me take time to care about you. Let me get a personal relationship with you. I never knew more about astrology than I did in geography after that class. I think it was basically more just astrology. I think geology was him a year before that, but the senior class was astrology, learning about astrology. space. Oh, that would be astronomy. Astronomy. Astrology? Astronomy. Astrology is like our, our star signs and bird signs and horoscopes. Astronomy is like planets and stars and so much your body. That's my that's my that's my ex-girlfriend right there getting that's burned into my head. Astrology, astrology, astronomy, astronomy, right? Astronomy. Right? I was been I was just I was I mean, I've never been more interested. I mean, I still am. I mean this the fact that we're here on this planet right now in this solar system and this universe is insane. And we're just in little buildings working all day, driving around in cars. We don't even realize we're the only habitable place in this whole, at least in our little solar system we have here. That we know of. That we know of. That we know of. Right? Half of us just walk around thinking we just got here and just fell here. Like it's just, oh, it's just life. It's not our day in life. It's like a godsend every day you wake up. Things that your lungs and brain and everything can do, very powerful. That's what this career is going to force you to do. Become the best version of yourself that you can be as quick as possible. That's what this career is going to force you to do. You need to self-evaluate. It's probably something you didn't do before. You need to work hard. You need to fail, learn from failures. Take emotion out of the deal. And take the next shot, make the next play the same way you made the last. Make every play and make every shot and every presentation as if it had a life and history of its own. What I mean by that is like it's your last chance to ever do it. I get one shot, one play, one opportunity, one presentation. I'm going to make it as if it's my last try I'll ever have and my only try, my only attempt I'll ever have at doing this. That's how you need to treat everything you do here. You do that. You're going to change yourself mentally, physically. I'm not the same person I was two, three years ago. Even though my entire friend group and family laughed at me, made fun of me, whatever it may have been, leaving the carpenters union, leaving a salary, leaving benefits after five years, 34 an hour, making a leap of faith to commission. Just like David Zoffin, our president, he went to school for very prestigious things like law for a while dropped out because his college one of his college roommates was doing this and was making incredible amounts of money and was leading people to success he liked that his dad said are you effing kidding me you're gonna throw away everything you just did in college to go sell insurance in the hood <laughs> i don't know what what state david zoffin started in but I was out in the south side of Chicago when I first came out to this city. But I got out of there pretty quick. <laughs> I saved that for Reich. Reich loves it down there. Oh, yeah, he does. Aha! Hey, Shaniqua! <laughs> <laughs> I love him. What you want? <laughs> ah, nothing, nothing. Life's great. I'm Reich. Reich like biker? <laughs> Reich kills it in the hood. He does. Ashley kills it in the hood. The hood needs us. They love it. Honest, ethical, good product. Never changes. Sign me up. I trust you. Eric, I think the only reason you made that sale last night is because of how sweet you are. I, I, I'm sorry. I forgot to say one more thing about term. The one more thing I forgot to say, guys. <laughs> Who would not trust that? This dude would never lie, would never cheat, would never even like think about misleading me. That's what those clients thought last night. So you can build rapport throughout the sits too. It doesn't have to be during rapport. You can stick these things in during the discount card. You can always talk about their family, whatever they bring up, bait them into it. 
What? You had a longboard too? Eric was telling the dude last night, middle of the city, talking about longboards. I'm like, what has he done? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, I used to go so fast on mine. Eric's like, I did too. He's like, how fast have you ever gone? Dude was like, I don't know. Like, I had to give it up though. I almost got hurt. Eric's like, yeah, I was going pretty fast on mine until I, I ate the dirt one day and the dude was dying. Dying. <laughs> right? Either way, guys, think about that teacher analogy though. That's who you got to be to these clients. Can't be the one that you hate. Check yourself while you're talking. I used to remind myself in this, in this presentation, I'd be like, I'd smile and like I'd get my posture back where it was and I'd be like, oh, I'm effing it up. I'm effing it up. Smile, smile, smile. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I got to try. I got to try. I got to try. It's not a skill I have yet. I have to try. Now I'm able to do it for 12 hours straight. Just did three interviews in the morning, selling the dream, selling the dream. Now I'm in here, selling the sales. Calluses, you build calluses, all right? Any questions on any of that, guys? Does that make sense, though? There's no cheat code. There's no shortcut. You're either going to make a commitment to yourself to get it, or you're not. It'll be a skill or a will issue. It takes no level of skill and no talent to make effort. You don't need either of those things to do any kind of effort. It's all you got to give is effort. Getting people on Zoom, control, starts on the phone. How I'm talking right now is how I'm going to talk on the phone. I start smiling and I'm still loud. And it's just like, you could be yelling at these people and they're, you're like, hey, Joe. You're like, they're like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Joe, this is Vince Masseri with American Income. We handle some of your benefits to the Carpenters, Local 250. How are you doing today? Good, good, glad, glad to hear that. Now, the only reason I'm touching base is because of that three by five yellow card that you filled out and you turned into us. I just need to verify the information that you wrote down. I'll get you off the phone here, okay? Now, it looks like you wrote down your address is 123 Locust Ave. And I go through all these things, nice, 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 smile, smile, smile. Now, last question for you, and I flip it to serious. Did you ever make it to any of the meetings where they discuss this benefits program with you guys? I got some bass in my voice. I just tell Reich to do that all the time. He kind of did it too much. He'd be like, uh, hey, Joe. I'm like, that's not even Reich anymore. He's like over there. He's like, yeah, oh, this is Reich. I'm like, calm, wait, calm down. Find, <laughs> find a middle ground here. Hold on. But you want to have that, like these union members, guys, you got to research unions. Unions are the entire reason that we have days off. Unions are entire reason we have holidays, minimum um, or maximum work hours for the week, mandatory overtime, vacation pay, sick pay, workplace benefits, safety at OSHA, all that. Before unions, you were in the mines or you were building the houses and you, you were worked to death and there was paid like a peasant, like a slave. And when you died in some places like West Virginia, dragged your ass back to your wife's kitchen table and dropped you off there. Kids were working in factories with no, no shoes, no socks, nothing. Walking on busted metal and busted glass. Take pride in this position here. We're all in the office professionals union, the local 277. Act like a professional. You get health insurance and life insurance here. If you write 21,000 in any quarter of the year, you'll qualify for up to $380 a month of extra commission towards a health insurance plan of your choice. What other 1099 job will give you that? You also get a $25,000 life insurance policy, a group term for just writing 21,000 in a quarter once once in a year, once every year, do that. I haven't even really seen them take it away. Once they gave it to me, it's, it's I don't think they're really looking to take it away. Because there's definitely some quarters I didn't do 21, I still have it. After five years, they boost it. After 10 years, they boost it again, and they boost your life insurance. The lifetime renewals, the reason we're all here, union negotiated benefit in your contract. So understand this be union, buying in spirit, the fact that we're all in the union and we're the only unionized insurance group in America, 
That is so powerful. Some of you guys don't even realize how powerful that is. Union members are always used to being told what to do, when to take a break, why, where, and how by their union superiors. We're calling them saying, we handle some of your benefits to the carpenters union. The only person that can take all that power and control you started with and get it diminished and throw it away is your own lack of confidence and effort. Uh, uh, well, uh, see, we're, we're we, uh, comes. Yeah. Yeah, you fill out the car. I'm sorry, Joe. No. What is this about anyway? Right? They'll start like as soon as you like dial down from that, that's when they start to get fishy. They're like, who? This dude's like repeating his words. It's not making sense. He's he's all quiet. He's sounds like he's reading from a script. What what who who's this guy? Who are you with again? Why do you gotta come to my house? No, you know what? I'm just not interested. They don't even know what's going on. Like, Joe, you don't even know what I'm trying to do. Like, you don't even know what you're not interested in. They're just shutting down because the whole union thing is lost now. There's no other company that gets these union leads like this. The guy that we sold last night and his mother, didn't mom didn't have papers, right? Able to cover her. State Farm, deny you. State Farm, credit check. Bad credit, deny you. State Farm, bad employment, low income, deny you, rating. But they'll, they'll pay Drake from State Farm billions of dollars to show up on the Super Bowl. So just take pride in what we got here, guys, because Jake or Drake from State Farm would have not have found those two people last night and got them protected, no matter how hard they tried cold calling commercial responses, cold calling internet responses. Get a free quote right here. Oh, you're now a lead. That's what they do. We find the working class by the masses. If you don't get it done while you're there, don't just leave there like, ah, oh, it's just another one I missed. That was his fault. He just wasn't right. He just wasn't ready to buy insurance. No, man, get upset. That guy needed you. He needed your A game. He needed your sauce. You've been lacking on your script. You've been lacking with your efforts. And now he didn't get insurance and you're walking home, closing the door, blaming him. It's your fault. That guy freaking dies a month from now, which has happened to me before. That will change your perspective on how serious this is. It's not all about money here. It's about heart for these people. If I don't get him protected, no one else is going to most likely Never find him. He's not going around putting his information everywhere on the internet, which is how other insurance companies get your lead. He's not calling into a commercial. He's filling out a reply card that has a union label on it that says in big red letters, fill this out immediately. A blessing is a blessing, especially being in a brand new agency. A blessing. You guys can all be MGAs in this room by the end of the year. That's the plan, sir. It's going to happen. Took me two and a half, almost two and a quarter, where I was oversaturated Pittsburgh. Already 12 MGAs in the office. There's three or four here. So understand that you already have control when you get on the phone, you already have it. Keep it there. Speak with emphasis and conviction. Be enthusiastic. You're good to go. That's going to bleed right into the sit. Now, when you get him on Zoom, you want to give him like a little disclaimer to keep the control. Because back in the field, to get control, we had to do all kind of whack stuff. Take our shoes off. And they would say, no, 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 don't take them off. And we'd say, oh, no, I'm already doing it. No, no, I'm kidding. We just say, oh, no, don't worry. My mom would beat my butt if I didn't. And we'd take them off anyway. Oh, can't control them. Told him to take his shoes off. He didn't even take his shoes off. After I took my shoes off, I'm all, I'm still, I just came out of my car. I'm in actor mode. I'm like, yeah, hey, Joe, hey. Everyone in the room got a big handshake. I'm Vince Maceri with American Income. Quality Control Manager. How you doing? Vince Maceri with American Income. Nice to meet you. Is that Grandpa? Grandpa, hey, I'm Vince Maceri. I'm walking over to Grandpa. The whole, the whole house was like, this is like a man of the hour right now. This dude's like on the spotlight. 
That's how you gotta be on Zoom. Now we have to transfer it to Zoom. Here's how you transfer it to Zoom. Plus we would tell them where to sit too. I'll have you guys sit to the right of me here. Can, can, can I move this? Can I move this over a little bit? Okay, I'm right-handed. It'll make things a whole lot easier. I'm smiling when I say abrasive stuff to get them to do stuff because that's how you do that. And can, can I move this real quick? Okay, great. I'm right-handed. It'll make everything a lot better. Oh, go ahead and sit to the right of me. Even if old Mary already sat down, I, I hated doing it. it. A lot of internal objections Gio had to sell me on. I had to ask him sometimes why we would say the things we did so he could make me feel right for doing it. Everything we do may look weird, may seem unethical. I don't wanna, I'm, I can't walk into someone's house and tell them what to do. That's rude. That's, a, hey man, if you don't, it's hurting them in the long run. That's what you gotta remember. You're not doing it for you, you're doing it for them. Anyway, now you're on Zoom. Hey, first thing out of your mouth is not gonna be anything else but hey, can you see me okay? Okay. Can you can you hear me okay? If they're having a hard time, right click their picture and two options will help you out. Ask to start video, ask to unmute audio. All we got to master is instructing people how to go to the bottom left of their screen. There's an arrow right here that mute my audio. You can control what microphone it's hooked up to. You can control what video it's coming from, iMac video or the Logitech video. Sometimes people hop on and their stuff's all over the place. Got to just guide them through it. Walk them through it. Instruct them. Always be instructing. Always be carrying the conversation. Don't be the other way around. Think of the teacher analogy. Anyway, can you hear me? Can you see me okay? Great. Real quick. Go ahead and grab that confirmation code I had you write down over the phone. That way I know it's really you. If you don't give them a confirmation code on the phone, just put it in your script. Tell, tell your manager Vince told you to do it. I'd love to talk to him. Give them a confirmation code to write down with your name and the appointment time. Triple solidify. Zoom is amazing. People have been able to write double and triple what they have ever in this company's history, but you have to solidify way more. The show ratio is not as great. You don't have a house to show up to yet this summer. Can't wait. Take you guys all out in the van, show you how it's done. Guarantee you guys results. Um, Zoom though, a little bit hard to guarantee it. You're just working off of phone calls. So when you get them on there, Eric, I got you down in my schedule before I lock you in. Do you see any reason why tomorrow, any time between five and six, wouldn't work for you and the wife? No. No? no? Okay, I just wanted to make sure because once we do put you down, if we miss you, that does mean another family member that's been waiting on us couldn't be seen during that time. So that will work for you, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. The only reason why I ask like that, Joe, is because we're running around with eight to 11 families a day, and we've been coming up on our last few, we're coming up on our last few days in the servicing area of Chicago. We've been in Elgin, we've been in Carpentersville, we've been in Gray's Lake, Crystal Lake, Fox Lake. I don't even know there were so many lakes up there, but I just got to make sure before we leave the area, that's, I'm, I'm a man of my word. I'll definitely be there for you. Want to make sure I have your word. You'll be there, right? Yep. Okay. How many of us are thinking that is so extreme? I will never say that. Oh my gosh, that's so abrasive. Oh my gosh, that's so. Eric, did I mean, did that sound that bad, guys? Like if someone did that to you, you would just be smiling. You'd be like, you'd be like, no, man. Holy shit, this dude's all over the place. No, you're good, man. That's it's all good. Yeah, we'll be there. Yep, no, that time works. Wow, you've been all over. No, yeah, no, trust me, Vince. We'll, yep, you got it. Yeah, we'll be there. I'm a man of my word, right? You tell him, I'm a man of my word. I won't miss you for the world. Anything less than that, you're going to start decreasing your show ratio. Half of you in this room will implement that. The other half will just. Getting them on Zoom, though, that's why we say these things, guys, because when they get on Zoom, the first thing they're thinking is, why the hell am I on Zoom? And who is this random ass dude with this Jimmy Neutron looking hair going all over? <laughs> but what is going on? Who is this guy? 
you got to flip the camera. Who are you? I don't know who you are. I know who I am. I'm servicing the whole entire union now. Who are you, Joe? Go grab that real quick. Grab that confirmation code. That way I know it's really you. Control points up. It's like a scale. It's like a Mortal Kombat match the whole time. Whoever's, whoever's winning, whoever's got the most health, right? The most control. That's going to give you your health back. He goes, wherever they're sitting, they're, they're going to be, you're going to get with some people that are like, literally like sideways, like, yeah. And you're like, yeah, Joe, go ahead and grab the quality control. He's like, oh, oh, hold on one second. They're going to go running all over their house. I wrote it down somewhere. We're making him do something. What is that? Control. control. Great. JB555, nice. So you must be Joe, and now I'm smiling again. You must be Mary. Okay. I'm Vince Masseri with American Income. We handle some of your benefits to the carpenters. How are you guys doing today? Great. Some of your benefits. Don't get caught in a PR nightmare. Some. Some. Are you contracted through my – are you from my union? Great question, Joe. I'm actually – contracted through your union to provide these permanent benefits. Does that make sense? Fine line, sticky situation right there. Don't be confusing us with the people that handle their pension and their health insurance. Um, anyway, so gets the number. Great. You must be Joe. You must be Mary. Introduce yourself. After they tell them who you are, say, all right, guys, <laughs> Uh, I just want to make sure, I just want to tell you guys, for the past 70 years, all we used to do was come out to the homes because they're wondering, right? What I say that they're wondering, who is this guy and why are we doing this right now, okay? We're actively answering this. For the past 70 years, we've been coming out to our members' houses to get you guys set up with these benefits, and we've never changed it. We're really old school. Due to the pandemic, they haven't seen you guys over Zoom, okay? So we're still committed to keeping... Or we're, we're, we've been deemed an essential business. So um, we're still committed to, to keeping our commitment to the communities and getting you guys out these benefits. If I ever cut off or my face gets you know, out of the picture or, or you can't hear me, just, just let me know and I'll stop and repeat myself. I'm pretty new to Zoom. Um, the only time I've been on here is besides this, it's like with my, my girl and she's always just making fun of me for, for, for my, big, my big forehead and and cause you know, whatever, right? Get them to laugh, right? Like normalize yourself with them. Cause they've never been on Zoom either. Most likely they have now, year later, but you know, most haven't really been on Zoom besides with who? Their family. What did I just tell them? I'm usually not on Zoom unless it's with my family. Oh, he's like me. All right, I like this guy. I'm receptive now, right? Credibility, trust. And guys, I'll tell you what, don't go on with your mom or dad. I don't know if you've had your mom or dad on Zoom yet, but I could not get off the Zoom. So um, just let me know, guys. I won't keep you as long as mom and dad, but um, glad to see you. Nice to put a face to the phone call. I'm going to go ahead and get your information plugged in. How you guys doing, though? You having a good day? Okay. That's awesome. Good. That's a nice home. How long have you been living there? It looks like a nice home, at least, right? Look in the background. Oh, it looks like a nice kitchen. You guys probably, it looks like a nice home. How long you guys been living there? What are the five questions? Nice home, family. How long, nice home. Yeah. Why are we asking nice home and how long? What do you think the psychology behind that is? They're thinking about the future of their home and mortgage or for their needs. Good answer, good answer. Um, Christy, I'm coming to you next. Brian, I'm coming to you next. Tasha, I'm coming to you next. I don't know. You don't know? Tasha, what do you think we ask them why they, what, nice home, how long have you been living there? What, what psychology does that help us with? Um, doesn't it help us get information for later in the application? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good answer. How about you, Tasha? Or I'm sorry, Christy? How are you doing? Okay. Are you okay? I'm sorry. Um, to probably get them thinking about the mortgage. Like, okay, yeah, it's a nice house. It's really expensive, though. <laughs> That's right. We're, we're getting, we're missing one answer, little answer. How about you, Brian? What do you think? 
you know, figuring out maybe like how much they have left on their mortgage. So the main thing, guys, is obviously, you know, they have a mortgage, you know, they have a home, right? Nice home, how long you've been living there. It's going to show that they obviously have a mortgage. That's good. What else is it's going to show is how many of us in here have a mortgage? <laughs> okay, why don't we have mortgages? Don't have the money to buy a house. Stability, reliable, steady source of income. Stable family, stable family values. Their values lie in their family. What does life insurance do? Provide stability for their family. All right? I saw how many lived here. Oh, we're just renting. Like that guy last night, dude. <laughs> that guy. We got on the oh. Zoom. We got a Zoom call with a streamer. That was so funny, man. He hopped on with like a blue and white, like shiny jumpsuit, like a raincoat type yeah. jumpsuit. He had like he looked like Andre Three Stacks from Outcast, like or like Cat Williams. He had like the Cat. <laughs> he had like the Cat Williams hair, like straight permed hair. Um, and, and, and these little like, like doomsday prepper, like goggles, like there were these little like blue goggles on his forehead and his little cat Williams hair was like coming right through the middle and it was hanging down on his forehead. On. He had gloves on, he had black gloves on. So cool. It was a cool guy for sure. Um, but he was just renting and Eric didn't really build too much like strategic rapport. He just kind of built friendly rapport and we get to the end of the sit. He's like, I barely make my rent here. My mom pays for this life insurance policy and I don't even have enough money to like do anything right now. And I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, how did I miss that? You know, how did we miss that? Right. So that's why there's strategic rapport. Now, at first, you're not really going to know what you're doing or why, why you're saying it or what they're saying. You're not really going to know this stuff. But as time goes on, you're going to start to see some trends. You're going to start to pick up on things as long as you're self-evaluating and you're going to be like, all right. He's not renting, he's owning, or he's owning, he's, he's, he's not owning, and he's renting. I'm going to change some of my, uh, I'm going to change some of my verbiage for like term and hold, you know, to, to kind of match like a, you know, more like on the go, less stable, single guy. Like I'm going to start changing some of the words in there to kind of be more compatible with that type of person. This discount card was created for people just like you who don't have health insurance and are kind of, you know, looking to save wherever they can, you know. Discount card, you, you, whatever, right? You just kind of spin, sell everything. What's the second rapport building question? Family? Family? What is it? What is it? Is it a family or what do you like doing? What's the question? Let me hear it. Um, what do you guys like doing? No, we're originally from the area. Cheater. Do you have any, do you have any, uh, any siblings? Uh, do you have a do big family? Have a big, or yeah, do you have a big family? Or are we going to go he cheated on you? Well, he was, it was right. It was <laughs> the script. He said the script and pulled out the script. What do you like to, what do you guys like to do in that area? No, nope. family. It's just, I wanted the exact sentence. I wanted the exact question. Do you have a big family? Do you have a big family? Brothers, sisters, and brothers. Family? Any brothers or sisters in the area? That all live in that area. So here's how you don't do it. Oh, nice song. How long have you been living there? Oh, great. You have a big family? Are they in the area? They're like, they just hopped on with you. They just hopped on with you. Watch the F on. They just hopped on with you guys. And they don't even know you yet. And the first couple of things out of your mouth, that nice song. I you live there. Oh, wow. You ran or own. You have any family in the area that I can come murder? <laughs> Brothers or sisters? Oh, yeah. I'm going to get your brother. Okay. <laughs> you know, like that's what it seems like. They're like, why is this dude asking me these questions right now? So it's more or less like, like I said, let yourself go. Just act like you're talking at a bar with somebody. You're getting to know them. Okay. That, oh, you, you've owned, oh, you lived there for about 10 years. That's cool. That's awesome. So you grew up in Naperville. You have any family around Naperville area? Do you get to see your brothers and sisters a lot or do they live far away? Oh, okay. How about mom and dad? Are they blessed enough to still be around you? Are you blessed enough to still see your mom and dad? Oh, no, they're all the way out in Chicago. We got to drive an hour to see them. Oh, man. Okay. 
Are they staying safe during these times? How, how's their health? How are they doing? They doing good? I know my dad's like 72 now. He's getting up there. Oh yeah, his health's okay. They're, they're doing good. Why do you think we ask how their health is? No, but kind of. No, how about you, Christy? What do you think we asked this for? It's on the same one, right? Help, same, same question. Uh, well, I think the third question is parents. Is it? Yeah. Parents? No, I'm not going to hear No. I'm not. Uh, uh, Hold out. I haven't looked at the script and, and so I haven't needed to look at report building questions in, since Vietnam. Uh, are your parents still around? How are they okay? doing okay health wise? Is how long have you worked at XBZ Health? I know the fourth and fifth. So parents is third. Yeah. Okay. Parents, help. Should have grabbed a real eraser. Big fan, they around? Parents and health? Does anyone know? Can anyone answer this? Why do we ask about the parents' health? Christy, what do you think? I'm gonna pick on you. Cause you got that nice um, smile. <laughs> <laughs> I hate my smile, but um, <clears throat> probably get them thinking about like how long they got left. Like, yeah. like how, like the, get life, lifespan type thing. Like we're not always gonna be here. Yeah, kind of. So here, I'll tell you guys. Okay, the health. If your dad had a heart attack or he's got diabetes and we're looking at Joe and he's kind of overweight too, and it's a direct correlation of his father, what do you think he's going to have? Diabetes. diabetes or he's about to have diabetes. A lot of this stuff's hereditary. Cancer, hereditary. Diabetes, don't think it's hereditary some some races get like diabetes more than others i know that but like i don't think it's hereditary but you know the thing is though guys like you're learning about their health you're pre-qualifying pre-qualifying how's their health okay All right fourth thing occupation oh your dad had a heart attack man ah oh. my dad had a heart attack when he was 51 he hasn't had one since he's been running and jogging every day how's your dad holding up he's doing good that's good, man. That's good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dad doing okay? How about you, man? You don't have any of that from him, do you? No, no, no. I, I, thank God. Uh, my doctor's been telling me that, too. I, I got to watch. Oh, okay. I'm like, I may be like, I may be very young, but I'm over here talking to this dude like I'm an adult, like I'm a professor. You know what I mean? How are you doing? How's your dad doing? You don't got that, do you? No, oh, no. They can come, they'll just go with it until you show them otherwise, you know? Occupation, oh, okay, what? Well, how long have you been down at the Carpenters Union for? Well, I look like I'm doing something. Don't just sit there and have your hands in your lap and start building rapport. Number one way to look like not busy at all, talk about how busy you were on the phone, and then you hop on Zoom, and you're just like, hey, how you doing? They're gonna start thinking the things I was talking about earlier. What are we doing here? Why is this guy sitting here? What, blah, blah, blah. So uh, well, I get everything punched in. How you guys doing? Start typing, start moving. Eric was flipping over the same folder like a million times last night, but it looked legit. Writing on the table. How long have you been down at that uh, carpenter's union for, Eric? Uh, five years. Five years. Awesome. Awesome. Occupation. Again, stability, reliable income, responsible human being. Guy that was just joined the union last year, whew, lay up, lay up. He ain't questioning nothing unless you give him a reason to. We're here because you, your union set you up with permanent life insurance. We noticed you didn't fill out any paperwork for it. Okay. Here's your choices. You gotta pick today. Okay. Too many of us vape in this damn office. 
<laughs> when Christy has one. <laughs> I saw Christy had one too. Babes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Never thought I would say that either. <laughs> <laughs> Occupation shows stability, shows credibility, commitment to the union. Most commonly, the longer they've been in the union, the tougher they're probably going to be. The more AIL reps they've seen. Now you got to bring the different juice. Did they show you that last time? How'd they do it for you last time? Yeah, I'm not here to boy your thumb. Oh, yep, yep, they did. Nope, nope, they didn't give you this last time. Here, start separating yourself. Plus, a lot of guys that have been in the union for a while, they're ready to like question everything. Who set this up? Am I paying for this? How much do these cost? You know, I don't really, even, my union sucks. I don't even like my union, even though they supported my whole livelihood and retirement for the past 30 years of my life. No. We don't like this, that, and the other, right? They're just like sour, crabby, especially carpenters, iron workers, carpenters. Laborers, those are some real ass people. Don't be fake. <laughs> if you could only hear the conversations on the job sites that I've heard, <laughs> if you could only hear these conversations, I think that's the number one thing I miss was the insane diversity in personalities every single job site. From the wackiest of the wacky to the professional to the in-between, I mean, probably the biggest thing that helped me. I'm like, I know what kind of freaking laborer you are. I know what tickles your fancy. I see what you're getting at. You want to alpha male me? We want to play, you know, which, yeah, alpha to alpha. I know just enough to give him, just enough to butter him up with, and then I hit him with a jab. They like that. Oh, I'm crazy. Uh -huh. Last question. What do you like to do for fun in the area? Why do we ask that? Why do we ask that? Tasha, what do you think? Uh, to see if they have any hobbies like skydiving. Hobbies like what? Skydiving or dangerous? Skydiving, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a good answer. That's not the wrong answer. See what kind of money they're spending on what they like to do. See what kind of money they're spending on what they like to do. Gave it away at the beginning. I talked about the casino. Maybe I wasn't, maybe you guys didn't like me. Maybe I wasn't the cool teacher yet, so you didn't hear me. I heard you. Talked about the casino. Five. Fun and area. You get it. You know what it is. You forget this and you start freaking out and diarrhea out the mouth. Flip the camera. Flip the camera. Start asking questions. Questions will get you off of a topic that you didn't want to be stuck on. Just remember, form, family, occupation, recreation, me. If all else fails, form. A little bit of me in there. A little bit of me every time. Yeah, you did that for five years. I did that too. Yeah, relate to him. Relate to him. Eric's like, yeah, I used to dig graves. Yeah, you think you're tough stuff with your little night shift, Joe? I used to work the graveyard shift and actually dig graves. They're going to be like, wow, respect. Wife, another female, empowered. Woman empowered. They like that. You're out here, independent woman, getting it. The wife's like, I wish I could. I wish I could have did that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, you know, that's how you got to be. Got to find what you can relate to and use it. Now we're going to go into the intro. This is where we have two different little paragraphs, okay? And the ratings are slightly different as well. Who in this room has done the intro before in a, in a real sit? What? That's been part of a union. Did and... you really just ask me that? Huh? To say yeah, the intro, it's do you have you have to be part of a union, be part of a program, and we have an A plus rating in these three reasons, right? That's yes. The yep. Oh. It's the why we're there, and it's the ratings. Yeah. Why we're there, what we're gonna do today, ratings. Who has done the intro? Not yet. Not yet. Who you with, Matt? Yeah. No, it's this yesterday. No. Getting it today. I think so. Good. How about you, Zoom people? My Zoomies. 
No? Okay. Say, Drew, whose team are you guys on? Drew, Josh? I'm on Josh. Drew. Drew, 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 Drew. Josh? How about you, Bri? Casey's team. Casey's? Okay. Tell Casey, say, put me in the game, coach. Tell Drew, say, Drew, I'm ready. Let me in here. You're not going to beat Vince in March Madness this week anyway. Let me in here. <laughs> <laughs> me and Drew go way back, okay? Me and Drew go way, way, way back. Day one in my career, I knew Drew. <laughs> I probably don't say that to him because I think Josh has been saying it to him all day, and it's really pissing Drew off. <laughs> He's like, Vince just wrote to get last night. He's like, what are you going to do? He's like, dude. He's like, stop it. <laughs> All right, guys. Really, though, get these reps out of the way. I know your manager. Let me in. Get me in there. Put me in the game, coach. What's the worst that can happen? They tell you that you're in. They tell the client for you. Hey, this is my trainee, Christy. Be easy on her. She's just starting out. She's going to tell you a little bit about who we are today, who handles your benefits. And you can sit there and mess up all day. And now that Drew said that, the clients are going to be like, ha, 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 trainee. <laughs> They're like having fun with it, you know. It's okay. Gio used to make me go to the bathroom. And then he would like just like throw me under the bus while I was in the bathroom. Yeah, be nice on him. He may forget some of his words. Might turn red a little bit. But uh, he's the best we got right now in training. He's, he has a big heart. He'll do great for you. And I'd come back and they'd just be, yeah, go ahead, Vince. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what happened in here? Like, what, what, what just changed? And then, or, or they start messing with you on purpose. What is that? What does that mean? And they're like looking at Gio. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> when I first said Matt Hunsberger, when I first trained Matt, <laughs> I, came, I came into this dude's house. Matt was like still stuck in the car. I'm like, we got to go, Matt. I'm like, we can't sit in the driveway. I'm like opening the, there's like a little fence thing. I had to like reach over and like unlatch it. And he like opened the door. He's like, hey, he's like, come on in. I'm like, hey, I'm like, I got my trainee Matt in the car. Is that all right if he joins us? He's like, he's like, F no. He's like, you didn't tell me I had another person with you. I was like, <laughs> I was like, are you being serious? He's like, nah, I'm just playing with you. He's like, well, I'll mess with him. And I, he's like, what's his name? And I was like, Matt. And, and I'm like, there he is. And Matt's like stuck on the fence. Matt's like trying to open up the fence. And he's like, uh, and he's like, hey, hey. He's like, come on, retard, open the fence. And he's like, <laughs> it's just a fence, stupid. He's like, you know, effing him, mother effing him. I'm like, I'm gonna get inside the house. I'm like, oh. Matt comes in, he's like, he's like so scared already, you know? They had this little girl that they adopted from their, their kids because their kids couldn't raise her. And she had like a thing wrong where I guess the kids uh, used while the kid was in the womb. And, but she was a beautiful little girl, just salt of the earth, little, little toddler. But she couldn't feel things or like taste things right. So she was like constantly trying to like eat soap and stuff while we were presenting. Like she would like climb on the middle of the table and she'd start like grabbing candles and like trying to eat them. <laughs> and the, the, the dad, the grandpa was so cool. He's like, yeah. He's like, uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Come here. She's like bouncing all around. He's like, yeah, no, nope, we're listening. He's like, he's like, dang it, Caroline. He's like, she's like, throw me, throw me. He's like, throws her up against the couch. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Matt's sitting there like, what is going on right now? That's what Tommy used to do. We used to practice script review in Tommy's office. He'd come in and he'd play like a YouTube background of like dogs and kids crying and freaking out. And <laughs> so Joe, what we're going to do today. It's like, you guys are going to, like I said, this job is going to force you to be the best version of yourself you can be. Got to keep your composure. Got to learn from your failures. You gotta be patient. You know how to spot weaknesses. A lot of psychology. A lot of psychology, guys. Um, so the intro, though, for the Drew and the KC team. Okay. Pretty much after the rapport is over, say, by the way, guys, uh, did you make it to the meeting where they talked about the program? No. Okay. Do you remember the letter that came with the card that you sent in? Show them the card. Okay, great. Well, that, that's why I'm here. When you got this letter from the Carpenters Local 250, you returned this card. Show the certificate. In the letter, 
it said that when you return the response card, you'd be contacted by an AI representative at a local 277. Always have your union badge. Credibility is everything. I hold it up to the screen every time. I'm like, Joe, like, can you see that? Let them read it. Share the screen. Don't just be like, hey, you remember this card? Oh, oh, now it's gone. How about this letter? You're like shaking, your hand's shaking. No, nope, can't. Oh, all right. Well, what it says is, you know, that's like, they're like, what in the hell? Credibility down the drain. Share the screen, share the letter, share the card. Let them read it. Let them read your badge too. You guys should all get a union badge over the next month in the address that you signed up for, signed up with. Okay, it said that when you return a response card, you'd be contacted by an AI representative. That's me. And then you guys go, simply enough, you show the slide about who we are. All right? All right. Show that slide. That's going to go through American income. Kind of, you know, just proofread it a little bit for them. We were founded in 1951 as a 100% union benefits company. And uh, over the years, guys, we've expanded and we now provide benefits to not only labor unions, private associations, credit unions, and even the general public through our, through our programs there, guys. Um, you know, we're actually the largest subsidiary of Globe Life. And Globe Life is the largest life insurance company in America, okay? And um, guys, I don't know if you knew this about Globe Life, but we're also the official life insurance company, the Dallas Cowboys. And we just got the naming rights to the Texas Rangers Stadium for the next 30 years. You never heard of American Income, though, before? It's pretty common. We don't advertise as a company. We're very private. What we do is we handle all the permanent benefits for the unions in the area. And we work with over 30 to even 40,000 different unions and groups across the country. Okay. As you can see, we're a highly rated life insurance company, both through the Better Business Bureau and AM Best. Have you ever heard of AM Best before? All right, you guys know customer service, financial strength, tolerance to pay out. Pretty self explanatory. Guys, I'm going to show you not how to run through the ratings. Yeah, have you guys ever heard of uh, AM Best before? Oh, okay, well, what they do is they write life insurance companies on an A through F basis, and we have an A-plus rating for them for three reasons. Um, customer service, we're one of the only companies that still sits down with our members face-to-face -face and explains how the programs work. Um, second reason, that, reason for the rating is financial strength. You know, American income, they currently provide, you know, we currently have $60 billion worth of insurance in force. What that means, Eric, is if, you know, God forbid everyone of our policyholders dies tomorrow, we would still have enough money to pay out every single claim and, and keep the lights on. Um, the third reason the town is to pay out. Normal payout for most companies is like four to eight weeks. Most companies can legally take six to 12 months to pay out. But when something happens, when does your family need that money, Mary? Yeah, right away, immediately, right? So that's why our company claims, uh, we pay out claims in three to five days using our freedom of choice certificate. I'll go over that a little bit later. Now my job is simple, guys. It's really just two parts. To go over the no cost benefits that have already been set up for you and review some additional ones that you might have to qualify for. I just need you to listen and ask any questions you might have since we try to take care of everything today. In fairness to the, all the members waiting to enroll. Like that was beat as hell. Don't do that. Don't get that like actor, actor, right? Be an actor. Okay. Guys, have you ever heard of uh, AM's Best before? Okay, no problem. Most, most people haven't. What they do is they rate life insurance companies on an A through F basis, kind of like a child support card. You know, hopefully, uh, little, little Susie over there is getting A's on hers, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Fake laugh, fake giggle, whatever you have to do, right? But that's not fake. I love little Susie. She's adorable. I hope she is getting A's. Convincing myself, right? Uh, so one of the three guys, they, they grade us on three things, okay? The first thing is customer service. We're actually one of the only companies that still sits down with people face to face. Now, since the pandemic, we've been just keep, you know, we still uh, wanna, wanna keep our commitment to serving and protecting the community. So we're seeing you guys over the Zoom, you know, whatever we gotta do, right? Uh, financial strength is the second reason for the A plus rating. 
American income actually has $60 billion worth of insurance out there in force. Um, and, and what that means, Joe, is God forbid every one of our policyholders were to die, we would still have enough money to pay out every single claim and, and still do business the next day. Okay. Does that make sense? You guys still with me? Right. High, low, high, low. Hand motions. Look at their eyes. Make sure they're looking at you. Last reason, guys, so they know, like, to snap their head back up. I'll be like, last reason, Joe, if Joe's looking down at his phone. And the last reason for the rating, Joe, Joe will be like, is, is actually financial stability. Or, I'm sorry, time is to pay out. Right? And then you go through that with that same demeanor. Okay. You two have had enough practice. We don't need to, you guys know, obviously, you know, how to do ours. Ours is much more lengthier. Um, you guys have it down pretty well. Um, but, you know, you've gone over that in our morning script reviews, right? The voice flux, why to say what, when to say it, why we say it there, how to say it. Okay. And then I honestly, guys, I mean, I would be a little bit more assumptive with this why we're there. My job is simple. It's really only two parts to go over the no cost benefits that have already been set up for you and review some additional benefits you have to qualify for. I just need you to listen and ask questions. You might have, you might have since we try to take care of everything today. In fairness to all the other members waiting to be seen during your service period, I would just be a little bit more descriptive than you guys can. You know, don't, don't be afraid to just ask Drew if you can throw in a sentence or two. Um, you know, maybe like, uh, my job is simple to go over the no cost benefits that have already been set up for you and review some permanent insurance benefits that the union set up for you as well. Now, those you have to qualify for, they're at a union negotiated rate. I don't even know if you can qualify, but if you can qualify and they make sense, we just have to get you taken care of today during your enrollment period. If you can't qualify, they don't make sense, we just wouldn't even worry about it. And that, that's just in fairness to the several thousand families waiting to enroll. Any questions on what we're going to do today or why we're here right now or how we got contracted to you guys? Concise, confident. Right? And then, guys, this, like, if you F this paragraph up, you'll miss the whole sale. Like, you'll, you'll get to the end and you'll start doing term and hole and they'll be like, what is he going over right now? We didn't know this was coming today. We didn't know we had to make this decision today. That's because you flew through your wire over there. I'll say it three times if I have to. Like, does that make sense, guys? Any questions? They'll be like, uh, I'll be like, okay, so that means no. Now, guys, okay, there's four no-cost benefits, right? One of which is that insurance policy that would go to your wife if something happened to you, okay? There's also additional permanent life insurance benefits that your union set up for you today as well that you have to qualify for. Those are at a cost. I don't even know if you can qualify because they're at a union negotiated rate. They're a little bit harder to qualify for, taking it away. But if they make sense and you can qualify, the union has us out here to get you enrolled into those today. If you can't qualify or you don't see a need, makes no difference to me. We'll just get you out the no cost benefits. It's just my job to go over both parts of the program. How does that make sense, Joe and Mary? What do you think they're going to do? Stop you from repeating yourself? Why are you trying to make it more easy to understand? <laughs> like no one's going to stop you say it three times if you have to we'll open up for some questions you all right you need to go upstairs to the hip institute no, I'm just okay. trying to anyone have any questions you're not going to see me probably I'm not sure I'm on my team, you know, so if you have any questions, oh, actually, you'll see me on Friday. I'll be doing the training class on Friday, getting you guys prepped up for release. All right, I'm going to give you guys like 10 seconds to get all your nervous tendencies out of the way. Someone has a question in here, I know. How long is too long for report? How long is too long for report? It says 10 to 20 minutes in the script, but if, you, if you've really got them going on something and you're building a really like, strong, like, is, is there an upper limit that you should be like, all right, we've been talking for like a half hour. All right, so why we're here is. So when you start seeing, uh, Jules, when you start seeing the client, like talking back, smiling back, 
asking you questions, getting you started, that's a good sign that it's almost over. Spend some more time on that. Bait them in with some more questions. Oh, really? You went to Columbia? Oh, we got another vapor. Tasha, yeah. Hey, Brian, do you vape? No? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Boo! No, 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 that's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's going to look at this recording and be like, what is going on? <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure I did a pretty, uh, pretty blatantly, like I, I was definitely dropping some swear words here and there. I was telling everyone at the beginning, I'm like, I swear a lot. It's just to let you guys know. And next thing I know, it was on YouTube. I was like, whoop, whoop. He just uploaded it right to YouTube. I was like, okay. So, um, Report, you know, when they start doing that, spend a little bit more time on it and, and get these questions out of the way. And, and, then, and then you can kind of move on. Like when they're going and going and going, now you can stop them. All right, well, I'll tell you what, Mary, you guys seem like great people. I could probably talk to you all night. I, I should have made you my last appointment, but we got five other people right after you. So I'll go ahead and get started here, right? And then, you know, too, too long for rapport is like when it's just you talking and you're just telling stories about yourself and they have no interest in it and they're looking around and they're yawning and they're, they're, their smile is gone and they're just like, yeah. No, I, I know what you mean, yeah. And you're like, all right, like it's done. Like I either need to fix this right now. Like I need to, like I need to get something. Like, hey, I need to like change it up. I'm like, yep, yeah. oh, okay. Almost done, Joe. I just got a few more things to punch in. Is this your date of birth? Is this correct on the card? Okay. How long ago did you fill that out? Oh, wow. It took us that long to get out to you? Yeah, we're so busy. It takes us a while sometimes. How long have you been in the union for? You can, like, get yourself back into it. If it's gone, like, down the, you know, beaten path of, like, dryness. You know, you can get yourself, you can make it make it wet again <laughs> you can get it back you know get it all um you know fired up again and, and, and just just flip the script don't be talking flip the camera don't let them be interviewing you you interview them you know what i mean don't don't get on a big rant and you know start talking about mindless stuff like it, it just can't be like mindless rapport it has to be things that don't make you look like some jag off just doing a bunch of rapport like you know make it strategic you know get get Use questions that are going to sell them on you and use questions that uh, make them sell you or make them sell themselves to you. You know, so when rapport is going too long, they're probably going to cut you off. Now you're going to have a weird start. What's this all about anyway? All right. That's kind of sometimes a good sign. All right. All right. Well, I got to go. I got to get going, Vince. So what's this all about? And you see him smiling. You're like, all right, we're good. So I really can't think of any other ways to tell you like how long is too long. You'll, you'll learn, you'll see. Any other questions? Oh, I forgot in the intro, uh, in that disclaimer, um, after, you, after they read that quality control number and you say, great, you're Joe, you're Mary. Okay, I'm Vince Masseri with American Income. Uh, Handle your benefits of the Carpenters. Go ahead and get to a table somewhere where you can take some notes and prop the phone up. If they don't have a laptop, then you're going to have to use a phone. If they have a laptop and they're using a phone, do whatever you can to get them to use a laptop because your voice and your, your quality on, on that phone is not going to do what it needs to do sometimes. But that's control too. They'll get up off the couch, they'll go to a table, and they'll, they'll, they'll go and get notes, and they'll think that it's really, really, really important, at least ready to take some notes. That's why you don't want to have dry rapport. You get them to get up off the couch, get them to go to a table and take notes, and then you just start asking them questions, and they got the pen in their hand. They're like, yeah, that's why it's got to be some good rapport. Guys, research this. Good rapport tips. There's plenty of books out there, many books, so many books. Invest into your business. Audibles all the time. Do you have any suggestions? Sell there be sold by Grant Cardano. I don't know if that's what you were gonna say. That was she got preach. I'm listening to that. Ed Ed Milet. 
Ed Milet on Spotify. I have a Spotify playlist called Ed Milet Fire by Vince Masseri. If you search that in Spotify, you'll find it. How do you spell Ed Milet? E D M Y L E T T. That's correct. Okay. Fire. With, I think some exclamation marks. I don't think it has to be perfect. It'll pop up. I put everything in there that I listened to after I read Seller Be Sold. And it kind of went from like sales stuff to like life stuff. It was really cool. Really, really changed my career and changed my life. I'm not going to lie. It teaches you how to be exactly what I'm talking about. Get your mind right. Like you ain't going to be able to get up and be your best every day at this. That's why you got to get up and you got to work out. That's why you got to get up and you got to do yoga. Whatever you do to make your mind right, pray to God, clear your mind. The last thing you should do is wake up every morning and touch your phone for an hour. That's one sure way to shoot yourself in the foot with your thoughts. You're looking at all this fake stuff out there. People who are working nine to fives, not going anywhere, drinking all over the South side bars. Well, that's Pittsburgh, not South side here, but you know, people partying all over the place, spending their 500 a week paychecks every weekend. You know, oh, I'm in here practicing the script. My life sucks. I'm in here doing presentations, getting no sales. My life sucks. Short-term thinking, short-term thinking, think long-term. You come in here to be a business owner, go compare yourself to other business owners. What do you think the Capital Grill owner is doing down at Capital Grill? He's in the back, sweating his cojones off, cleaning up everything, last one out, first one in. He can't even go nowhere. Same with your friend at the bank. Oh, come on, Vince. We just got off at three. We're going down to the park, the beach. Oh, why can't you leave? Come on, man. Why are you working so long, bro? Why are you working so hard, girl? And then six months later, you're able to close a deal left and right because you sacrificed the first 90 days. You grinded and you just made a 2K sale at, 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 at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. You made another 2K sale at 4 p.m. and another 2K sale or maybe a 1K sale at 6. You just made four grand, three grand. And Wednesday, you got the whole entire day off. And it's 11 in the afternoon and you're coming over. This, now, this dude's still at the bank. You're making all Hey, man, come on. We're going to go to the warp Tour. Oh, you can't go? Why are you working so long, bro? Why are you working so hard? Why do you got to stay at the bank? I just, I can't leave until five. I get fired. Oh, okay. Compare yourself to other business owners. Don't compare yourself to the guy at the bank or the girl at the bank. So yeah, those, those are my uh, advice for, for books is Ed Milet. Um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Mace, what up, dog? Uh oh, here he comes. Oh, you're in uh huh. I just don't want to say what's up because you're awesome. I love you too, sir. All right. All right, guys. Any other questions? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Peace. We're done. Hope you learned something. If you liked it, drop some fire in the group me.